Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to 2024, the very first podcast of the year. I'm so excited. It's a great episode. You guys are going to love it. Bracket are my guests, Angelo and Zach from Bracket. Um, we have a great time talking about memories, but also the very present and the year ahead. It's going to be a good one. So before I get to that, let me tell you about this Saturday, MXPX, this Saturday, January 6th, in Los Angeles, California, at the Hollywood Palladium, MXPX, Less Than Jake, Reliant K, and Smoking Popes. This is the last time I can say this show on this podcast, and then it's in the past. So um, by now, tickets hopefully are sold out, but there might be a few left because as of the recording of this, um, still in 2023, before the Seattle show, I think there's about 200 tickets. So we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Maybe it's sold out by now. I hope it is. But if not, we have this week. Go get your tickets. I'll see you there. Going to be awesome. Um, and then we have a bunch of shows coming up with the Ataris, MXPX and the Ataris. You can get tickets at MXPX.com. February 9th, that's a Friday night in New York City at Webster Hall. Come on and see us. There's tickets available right now. Philadelphia, the next night, is sold out. Going to be good. Um, can't wait to do those shows. And then the month later, March March uh, 15th and 16th, Atlanta, Georgia, and Orlando, Florida. Both of those shows have tickets. Please don't wait. It's going to be a great packed crowd. Come down see us say what's up um and then we have uh sold out weekend denver colorado april 5th and that's sold out and then salt lake city april 6th saturday night sold out thank you gonna be awesome uh denver is gonna have an extra extra friend with us five iron frenzy gonna be good so uh all those shows are are either sold out or getting low, so please don't wait on tickets for that. MXPX.com for those tickets. All right. More shows coming. If you guys, if anybody saw any of my live streams, you know more shows are coming. But um, I appreciate you guys. All right. MXPX.com for merch, for tickets, for music. You can go and find your music there, um, our music there, <laughs> your music, our music, whatever. It's, uh, it's all of ours. Um, appreciate that. If you want to call in, leave a voicemail, tell me a story, ask me to talk about a topic. Maybe you have a question about MXPX. Call in 360-830-6660. Okay? Call in, leave a message, leave a voicemail. And of course, you can submit Music Monday to the Mike Herrera podcast facebook group put a youtube link with your video and a little blurb and that'll make it onto music monday episode where i review new songs it doesn't have to be a new song just i i like to do songs that would never in a million years get reviewed by uh, a real major publication because this is a community trying to spread love so if you want to be part of that i would love it um all right that's it thanks for thanks for listening to the very first episode of 2024 the mike herrera podcast coming at you with my guests, Angelo and Zach, Zach and Angelo, whatever order you want to put it in, you just go ahead and do it. Uh, these guys, uh, Angelo, Angelo is the guitar player and Zach is the bass player. And we don't get to see Marty or Ray. Marty's the singer and guitar player. Ray is the drummer. But Angelo and Zach do a great job and we, we, we get right into it. So Bracket are a band that... that we go way back, MXPX and Bracket go way back and played a lot of shows together back in the day. And uh, we just love them. We just love their music. We love them as people. So uh, enjoy this episode because I really, really loved it. All right, here we go. Here's Bracket. This is, this is, this is. Cool. Thanks for taking the time. I'm, this, we were supposed to do this like a year ago. What was this? We've just been way too busy for you. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah. glad you finally took the time, guys. <laughs> finally took the time. We carved out a little piece of our calendar. Awesome, awesome. You know what's so funny is today, uh, MXPX posted a, a backstage, just like Tom, our guitar player, and Dave Lake from Diesel Boy talking about bands and stuff. And unprompted, he didn't know we were talking, you know, on the podcast at all. Like he doesn't know this, and he was, he was just like, 
oh, let's talk about Bracket. How good are they? And Dave's like, oh, I love Bracket. Two rack food. You know, like they just start talking about it. So like if you, well, you guys posted it because we, we uh, added you to it. But yeah. it's so weird that that happened. And now we're talking on this podcast. So welcome. Welcome to it. What's up? <laughs> it's like Thank the, you for having us. Yeah. How you been, Zach? Doing good. Just, you know, we're we're it seems like we're not staying busy but we're all staying busy you know i mean we're doing uh doing all the regular life stuff and uh angela and i each had a couple of side projects to fill in the gaps while brackets not uh super active you know tour wise and recording wise like we were in the old days um but we're still doing it we're still getting in there we're still getting together every so often to uh kind of check in with each other i mean we hang out outside of band stuff and always have anyway so for us, that part's great. That's rad. Um, and uh, but you know, just like you and probably you know a lot of our friends, you we can't sit still. We got we have to be doing something, you know, musically and otherwise. Yeah, so, you all, you just got to make something happen. You know, yeah, yeah. You got a creative outlet. That's so cool. For Man. me, whether it's music or you know working on working on the old car, build. I was building motorcycles for a while. You know, it's just all kinds of stuff in between work and life and band stuff and family stuff and you know i ask anybody i can't sit still that's good man don't <laughs> as soon as you sit still that's when you start it's feeling old yeah it's the beginning yeah. of the end yeah so never sit still uh by the way it's happy new year to you guys because this is coming out january 1st monday january happy 1st so happy new year 2024 here we come um we're going to talk all about bracket and all your other stuff you guys got going on um and I, I guess I'm excited for 2024. I mean, kind of like ready, ready to get a new thing going. You know, a new year always is like a good excuse. So reset button. Yeah, reset button. Right. There's no easy button, but there is a reset button. You can, you know, each day, each year, each period, whatever it is. So uh, I've been, I, I've been loving just hanging out, listening to bracket songs, like going, oh yeah, that one, that one, you know, like Sour, such a good song. Like I remember these from touring with you guys, for those that don't know, listening, MXPX and Bracket toured, like we did a whole Canadian tour together from the West Coast all the way to the East Coast. I don't know, 20 In the dead of winter? In the dead of winter, like 25 shows or something like that. It was every single place you could possibly go in Canada, I think we went. Um, and we froze our asses off in some respects, for sure. <laughs> that was a lot of miles, and thanks again for bringing us out. We had a blast. Yeah, that was so much fun. Those those were like so many good memories from that tour, and one absolutely horrible memory from that tour. <laughs> Do you? You probably don't remember, but I had my at the time I played with my fingers. I played bass with my fingers, and I had we had a bus, and I had like slammed the the door to the bathroom. And then my finger got caught in the door and just swelled up. It was just in so, in so much pain. And I actually taped it up and it didn't really work. We finally got to like Montreal and I went to a doctor and they drilled it out. But that was the beginning. After that tour, Zach, I moved to a pick. I was like, I don't want to be, I, I don't know. I want to be able to do both for one. And I think the universe said the pick's the way to go, you know? Yeah. Luckily, I didn't have to learn the hard way. And I always played with a pick. Yeah, yeah. You you always were great. <laughs> uh, I I learned the hard way. It was terrible, but the rest of the tour was so much fun. You guys were awesome. It was it was yeah. great. Angelo, sorry you weren't there, bro. <laughs> You're the new guy, right? Yeah, I think I joined the band just like pretty soon after that. Right? Was that kind of like ninety eight, ninety seven? Sure. Yeah. No, so, somewhere yeah. in there. Yeah. Sounds All great. I was missed it, but I'm I'm sure it would have been fun. When did you join the band? I, I think um, right out of high school, wasn't it? Well, pretty much. Yeah, I think it was. Well, it was like ninety eight or ninety nine, somewhere between there. Somewhere in there. So yeah, just just when Bracket stopped, um, you know, touring like crazy. So, I think you had to use a fake ID to to get in to play with us. Yeah, there was one club we played in the city in San Francisco or something where. Bottom of the hill. <clears throat> yeah, where oh. they, uh, I had someone else's ID. This, there was a friend of Zach's that kind of kind of looked like me a little bit. I think you look more like him. True. <laughs> so I looked like him a lot, but we called him Big Angelo. So, well, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I used that to to get into play just to, then I could drink and, or not really, I didn't do that. 
Yeah, you weren't you were going to push it that far. No, well, I, I can't remember. <laughs> that says a lot about your personality. Very reliable. Like you're not going to go too far. Yeah, that's me. Scared of everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, dude! Why? I wish you were on that tour. It would, we had a lot of good times, man. It would. Uh, We'll have to play with you guys again, you know. I was going to say, there's always next year. Yeah, or there's always 2024, year. this year, 2024, <laughs> uh, and next year, because uh, yeah. 2024 for MXPX is almost planned out. Like, we have, not that it's all completely, like, finished, but we have an idea of, okay, we're going to go here, 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 or we're going to try to do that, right? Sometimes the shows don't work out, the promoters, the venues, you can't get the date, something like that, but yeah. Absolutely would love to play with you guys again. I mean, it's so much fun. You know, just I keep playing that video clip that I was talking about the MXPX one with Tom talking to Dave Lake. Uh, just because it's just like, it's like one of those things where like hearing the words, hearing them laugh, hearing them say the same thing, you get into that loop where you're just like, that's kind of satisfying to listen. Like, I, I would never say that about Tom's voice normally. It's usually <laughs> terrible to listen to. <laughs> so, so my biggest takeaway from our tour together was when your drummer yuri was telling me in high school the gym teacher could not for the life of him remember to say yuri and always called him yui yui yeah yeah something, yui. Was something weird like that right was it yui? <laughs> so then yeah, we just called him yui all the time and he, he was like all right i shouldn't have told that story <laughs> but it's his fault right like so good so how's marty we're missing uh marty and ray what are those guys up to? Um, so Ray, so we all live in Northern California, Bay Area ish, and um, except for Ray, who moved to Denver, um, probably about twenty years ago. Whatever. A while ago. Who cares? who cares how long it's been? But yeah, um, yeah. So every every s- studio record we've done since Ray moved, um, or since since. Uh, since like the the fat records years or whatever have been um raised in denver we'll send him song ideas and Mm -hmm. um, he flies out and records his uh, track so he's been out there with his family for quite a while and um they're doing well and i guess we'll be seeing him a little more in 2024 yeah doing a thing or two and um and marty lives out here too and is um hard at work we're hearing that there's going to be a, a studio set up in his new house, so we're we're excited to get back to. I don't know, tinkering around with, tinkering around with each other. I don't know if that yeah. sounds weird. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the 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 latest <laughs> album you guys have out is is classic sounding songs, you know, bracket songs, you know. So like, I really enjoyed it. Um, what's the video? The video with you guys like as like um, horror monsters or something like that. Like that was cool. Like really creative and. I was like, oh, I bet Marty was so into this idea because he didn't actually have to be in the video. <laughs> oh, exactly. it was an easy sell for sure. Yes. Yeah. What's I the mean, song? What's the song? Uh, it's called Forget. Forget. Everybody look up Forget on YouTube or, you know, your your music library. And that's the album. That's the latest album you guys have out right now. Yeah. it's uh, The album's called Too Old to Die Young. And um, it's our latest album released uh <laughs> Five years ago. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's been a little while, but like... Oh, but no, I mean, yeah. The world ended a little bit. It was like, yeah, okay, exactly. are we going to keep doing this? But... Yeah. Yeah. We, um, and that was our first... So we took several years. <laughs> we took some time off of Fat Records, and uh, that mm-hmm. was our our kind of welcome back to Fat album. And it sort of came about um, through conversations with Mike... Um, I guess it was around, so we played the 25th anniversary Fat Records show in San Francisco. So okay. it was like 2015. Right. And and we saw him afterwards and he was just, he was like feeling nostalgic and, you know, happy to see us play for, you know, it was like our first show in five years or so. And he said, you know, I heard your last couple of albums, you guys have been, we were like self-releasing or putting out with other, other labels. And um, he was like, I like that stuff, but why don't you guys do like... Just do a little more, a little, a little punkier yeah. album, and uh, we'll put it out on Fat. So at that point, we were in the middle of uh, kind of constructing this crazy seven, 70 minute um, song album, and so we sort of decided that as soon as we wrapped that up, we would we would see what it feels like to kind of write a more straight ahead kind of classic bracket mm-hmm. album, um, and that's that's where that 
came from. That's cool. Was is that seventy minute song get released? Yeah. Um, What's that called? No one's heard it from start to finish yet, but <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I just think it's too long. So long. Um, seventy. You got to like. All right, I got to schedule in some time here to listen yeah, to this right. song. Like maybe like go for a nice walk or a hike, and um, yeah, it's called the last page, and it's a it's about seventy minutes. It's it's basically like ninety or so um, song fragments kind of that we weaved together to kind of try to make a, you know, unified. An opus. Yeah. It was kind of a crazy idea. And once we really got into it, um, we knew it was, we knew all along it was kind of crazy and that it might, it almost worked. (laughs) So here's a question. Do you get it to, do you get together for practice when you're working on it and do the full 72 minutes straight through ever? Did that ever happen? Never did. No. Um, we we kind of we kind of did. We would get pieces. together. We would do it in like yeah, yeah, little segments, like a fifteen minute chunk. That's long down. for a song, right? Fifteen it, minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know, three and a half minutes is 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 a chore for us. <laughs> right, right. Like it's a long song. Three and a like, half. Like half a set or whatever, you know. And yeah, we. I think there were some really really strong. Uh, would be songs and melodies and and things um that are that that do kind of sound like you know more classic bracket sound and then in between there's a lot of weird like there's some like choral harmony stuff and some weird instrumental things and we just kind of thought it would be fun and funny to do something um that pushed the boundaries of what would be um acceptable to anyone <laughs> yeah but it was it, it was a pain in the ass to make and it's kind of fun to listen to and um it's probably my favorite thing we've done even though it turns a lot of people off because it, you can't skip through the songs it's like it's just 70 minutes of um it's but like you a, can like a mixtape yeah in hip-hop yeah. It, it is a bracket mixtape bracket yeah. mixtape there you go that, that actually i think people can understand that like oh yeah i get that now yeah it's like that's what a mixtape is it's like a long song but I like that. I'm going to check it out. I haven't checked that one out, but I've been listening to all the random bracket songs and, and it's been fun. <laughs> Flea market. I, I love how Marty talks about white lies a lot. Like there's, there's a theme of like him either getting lied to by people like in varying degrees and also being the one, maybe the character in the song that is, that is telling some lies or whatever. But like I, I noticed that theme, and I was like, "I wonder what happened with Marty." You know, because he's he's he, he's definitely been lied to. We all have, right? We all have. So, I think that's something that's always you know easy for for him to write about. Some guys like to write about girls and cars and the system, or mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. And and I think it's e- that's the kind of thing that always has come naturally to Marty for some reason of maybe. Uh, things that he hopes that people can identify whether it's you know not feeling up to par or Mm -hmm. you know being wronged something like that you know i I don't think that marty is the kind of guy that's like necessarily angry with the world per se but maybe feeling not good enough or you know stuff like that Mm -hmm. and i think it's that just seems like that's always kind of come naturally to him and his in his lyrical content for for whatever reason yeah like the underdog vibe. I always cool. root for the underdog. Like, yeah. It's just my tendency to like want the team that's not supposed to win to win. Absolutely. And he's always been an anti-cool kind of guy too, you know? So if something is what everybody else is doing, he'll do the exact opposite just because he knows that that's what he can pull off. He doesn't have to worry about being the coolest guy in the room. He's just like, N- I will not wear a lampshade. <laughs> I'm but he, not try and fit in. He also could be like, I don't know. I haven't seen you play Angela, but he could be the best guitar player in the room. You know, so like, uh, definitely. So he's, he's really he's, good. So he's a gifted guitar player that shies away from playing solos. Right. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Oh man, I, I think yeah. You guys, you guys are all great. I mean, like seeing you play live and, and play the bass and sing those harmonies, Zach. Like that right. was always inspiring. Like I was like, I wish we could do that. You know, and and we. We get there a little bit, but never, never quite to the extent because you're going almost like there's some songs where you're like doing harmonies the whole time, right? 
Yeah. And it's and it's wild. It's like part of the lead at that point. It's not just a back backup vocal. It's like, oh, it would be weird if that wasn't there yeah. because yeah. it's just part of the fabric of the melody of a bracket song. And it's tough for us because, you know, we don't we're in we can't see the forest through the trees so we don't know where to draw the line do we let the song breathe on this part and have just the lead vocal come here and then just have some support here and there or do we just four on the floor and we go we go for it all the way through so it's it's just whatever feels right we're just you know i think you know how this is as a songwriter and and as a player we're everybody's trying to do something what the other guy isn't doing trying Mm -hmm. to be unique trying to do your own thing and for us we felt that uh we harmonized pretty well and it came somewhat naturally to us so we kind of c- sort of expanded on that and then we got known for it you know it's kind of our kind of our shtick i guess and then we might we <clears throat> sorry we went probably kind of like what zach was alluding to a little over the top with it um in some of those i don't think in a bad way but we kind of pushed the harmonies to the to the max of our um you know, we didn't, we weren't tasteful. We went <laughs> as just wanted to. Um, it was like an action movie, like a Marvel action movie, like just constant action, constant yeah. flash. No, no breaths. No uh, breaths. It's yeah. like a Marvel finale if ELO was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love yeah, it. Those, those like middle, uh, like the albums we put out between like 2006, 2014, and 2016, those three. I think we were kind of definitely pushing what we could do live because it was more than three part harmonies on a lot of stuff. Mm. And, uh, and we haven't convinced Ray to, um, chime in <laughs> from the, from the kit. No, yet. not yet. Maybe soon. Like, a Peter Chris kind of vibe with the microphone coming down. Yeah. He needs his own little moment. <laughs> he needs his moment. Yeah. <laughs> Just tell him to like rip off his shirt, do a drum solo, backflip, walk around with a drum around the stage, I would love hitting that. the drum. We always make fun of him that he's gonna one day we're gonna catch him walking around with drumsticks in his back pocket or something. <laughs> <laughs> so Ray singing, anytime he sings, it comes out just like Tom Petty, no matter what he's singing. So that's that's a that's, that's a his good time. that's his go to. I like that. That's good. Wow. Uh, so. I mean, live shows, speaking of live shows, I mean, you guys got something coming up 2024, right, this year? What are we doing, Ange? I forgot. Um, okay, what we know we're doing is we're playing, uh, we're going to Austria. I've never, nice. been, I've never been to Europe with these guys. Um, in fact, I've only been there with my grandma when I was uh, 18. So, um, Is that the fatherland, the motherland? Yeah. Are you Austrian? No, no, no. Um, if we were playing in Italy, then I... Oh, you're Italian. So that's okay. what, yeah, I went to Italy with my grandma when I was like... She took me after I graduated high school, but... Um, back, back to Luca, probably, right? Back to Luca, we yeah. stayed, yeah, stayed with family and stuff. But um, I don't get out much, and so 25 years later or whatever, um, we're going to we're gonna go. We're going to play um, Spam Fest uh, in Austria and Germany, just two, a two-day world tour. That's... that's a <laughs> yeah. Like any show we play is a world tour. So, um, Absolutely. yeah, those are the only concrete plans right now. So okay. When's that? That is May 31st in Austria and June 1st in, uh, what's the Stuttgart. Yeah. That one. Awesome. Awesome. Good luck with that. It's going to be, that's going to be huge. And I, I hope everybody has a good time with that. Um, that's coming up quick, actually. Like I'm just thinking about the MXPX schedule and we have like shows every month and it's just going to, before I know it, it's going to be summertime, and you guys are going to be in Austria and and Germany. Yeah, it's yeah. Going to be great. It's very exciting. Yeah, that's we, cool. We were just thinking we should probably get together and shake the rust off pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I mean, do whatever you, whatever works. But on. but uh, so you normally have been doing like San Francisco, some like kind of local cities around California. Have you done anything in the U.S. aside from California in the last couple of years, or are you is that what you're kind of planning maybe to do after Spam Fest? I think for us, where you know, a couple of us still have little kids, young okay. younger kids. Sure. Every one of us has a regular day job at this point. So for us doing 
uh, doing the full fledged tour, probably not super realistic. Um, but you know, this is sort of like us testing the waters for maybe we want to start doing, um, some festival stuff here and there, Mm -hmm. maybe a fly out, play with our buddies in MXPX, something like that. For example, you know, um, we've been talking to, uh, the diesel boy guys are interested in doing some stuff, you know? Um, so for us to do like a one-off here and there, probably totally our speed at this point. Um, yeah, I think so. so. Yeah. And, and we've got, um, each of us has a whole back catalogs of riffs and song ideas and stuff. So I think we're going to be focusing a lot on some songwriting and maybe recording some demos later on in the year is kind of what we're looking at. Rad. Now I think you guys are, that's the right idea. You have young kids, you have jobs, do whatever you can, to, you know, yeah. use, use the festivals to get in front of, you know, people that are going to be there and punk fans. And I mean, you know, I, I think for us it makes sense, like kind of like where we're at, uh, as a band and individually, it's just kind of makes the most sense. Yeah, for sure. Plus it's, thank you. Um, uh, plus it's more than what we've done. And you know, that's, I think we have plans to be, what we're talking about is a little more active than what we've been in the last couple of years, couple of years. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's a step in the right direction and, you know, seeing how, um, both what the response is and, um, and, uh, assuming that we have a good time, which I'm, I'm sure we will, then we'll kind of see where it goes, but yeah, absolutely. Dipping our toes back into it. That's the right idea. That's what we did when we came back in 2021. Was it one or two? 2022. I don't remember exactly, but our first show back was like, we did a couple shows. They went good, but we're just like, the craziness is like the cost difference in doing shows now is almost double what it used to be. So, you know, it's just, a, it's just a lot more to think about than just, Oh, let's do a show, you know? So then I'm sure with you guys, you have your own set of things to think about every time you decide, do we want to do this show? Yeah, we want to, but right. can't, is it a good idea to, you well, know, you know, we, you know, we are always getting somebody saying, Hey, when are you guys, guys going to play? When are you guys playing in Ireland? When are you guys going to come visit us in Australia? And we're like, send us a ticket. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, uh, cause the reality is, you know, um, we don't have like extra money to go buy a plane ticket and then, you know, go out of pocket and yeah. you know hopefully it pays off i mean there's a whole there's a whole business aspect in order to make this stuff work and uh you know i mean we, we, i'd i'd play anywhere i'll play anywhere anytime but mm. you know not if i have to pay <laughs> yeah you don't want to pay to do it pay yeah. to play um uh, i mean like with anything it just takes time to build something like that up you can't just go hey let's go to ireland you have right. like mxpx couldn't just i mean i we would have to like figure out who we're going to work with in Ireland, where we might play. If it makes sense, you know, like there's a lot of questions to answer before you just go there based on one person, you know, but if obviously like we get like lots of people when we're doing live streams from Brazil, from South America, like from all over, of course, but like you, you take it with a somewhat of a grain of salt, but, but if you actually look at data of like, who's listening to your albums, who's listening to your songs, then you can be like, oh yeah, there's people, people are there listening, you know. So, I mean, Europe, Europe, obviously, Australia and or sure. Aust- Austria, not Australia. Uh, I think I know the difference, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, th- it seems like they they've really been just holding true to like punk rock and like the I, I don't know what st- what the style is called, but like late '90s punk rock. Uh, right whatever that is uh melodic punk rock um and and i think you guys are gonna do great over there they're gonna love you guys yeah i mean we've we've already getting feedback from people you know who can't wait to see it and uh, welcome us back you know it's been we haven't been there since obviously the 90s and uh for us um we're super excited if this is the first time that all four of us are free to go you know there's always been one guy who is the holdout you know i can't make it i got a i got a th- i got a thing going on yeah. you know what i'm scared to fly or yeah uh, you know are you scared to fly i hate it yeah you hate it i mean we all hate it but yeah <clears throat> i mean i don't know scared but, it, but it's a little more yeah. serious than just i hate flying like you're a little yeah but i also i think it was just like the timing for all of this was really good because i just 
I reached this point where I was like, I don't, I, you know, we have this opportunity um, to do something together and something that will be, um, you know, that might pass us up if we wait too much longer. And L- yeah. let me stop you right there. The way this worked was. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the way to make it sound. the way this actually worked was I asked everybody else in the band first to sign off if they wanted to go and then I said, "Hey, we're all going. You want to come with us?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. You don't want to miss out on, on that yeah, one. Yeah. yeah, and but I definitely I was at a point where I was like, "This is fucking stupid. I don't want to you know, miss doing yeah. something." Yeah, I mean, you just got to do the work. It, I mean, everybody's scared of something, right? Like um I get it. I get the flying thing because every now and again, I'm not fr- afraid of flying at all. But like, sometimes we have gnarly flights, and you're just like this the whole time. You're just people like the a few flights ago, uh, uh, some crazy bump happened, and a, a lady fell down in the aisle. Like, she was okay, but like it was like whoa, like a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's a real thing, but I'm not making this better, am I? I'm making this worse. No, no. <laughs> Oh, really? It's better. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, like, I think one of the best things is, like, watch a video of of pilots in the cockpit and what they're seeing. Maybe that doesn't make it better either. But when I – we flew with um, with Dexter from The Offspring. You know, we were playing some shows with them a while back. And they always bring people along, you know, for their flights. And getting to see him and, like, t- you know, he's telling us, like, what's going on. Like, okay, da 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 it really helped kind of understand that, oh, yeah, it's, it takes a lot to bring planes down. I think that's the main thing is, like, multiple problems have to happen in order to bring a plane down. And that makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, no, it does. In fact, the last time I was on a plane, just accidentally we sat next to – there was a, a guy who was a pilot, you know, just doing a recreational – He's just flying somewhere. Yeah. Not flying the plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what are you doing here? <laughs> and uh, he talked to us the whole time because I was like, yeah, I, I fucking hate flying. And anyway, um, but it was, yeah, it was reassuring and calming. So we're going to bring a little personal pilot with us and we'll be fine. Yeah, just bring a pilot. Bring, yeah. bring somebody along. No, I'm really excited. Yeah, that'll be great. I'm ready to be over it. No, but I think I think a lot of bands are, are realizing, even bands that used to tour full time are realizing okay, maybe it's time to do weekends and do flyouts and do like the descendants um, for the last, you know, four or five years have been doing what MXPX has been doing for even longer, which is weekends. You know, we just go for the weekend um, and we could tour. Sure. But it would just, we're not like, it's kind of like you guys, like we have some personal situations where it's kind of better that we don't tour, but if we planned it, we could tour, you know, we, we just, it's just different, you know, but I don't really feel like, I don't really feel like touring is a must anymore. I really feel like you can fly out to shows. You can go there, come back, be home with your family. It's like what athletes do. It's sure. what, what a lot of like big, big, big country and rock stars and, and pop stars. That's what they do. They're, they're touring, you know, a couple couple nights you know on the weekend and then they go back to nashville like the country stars you know dolly parton kind of vibes well you know we sometimes have the discussion about bands that are that are in between where we're at and where a a popular more popular band is at where they're kind of in that i don't know if i want to call it like the gilded cage scenario but like they must tour otherwise the rent's not getting paid Mm. but their their life revolves around the road and with the rising cost of what it takes to tour um they're getting less and less for for their effort which is yeah. scary that's for really them. scary it's a pro- it's a real problem because if you don't diversify as an artist and you right. only make your money touring you have to tour and you're just stuck in this cycle and there's there's a lot of uh there's a lot of different bands and and outfits that that get stuck in that there's producers, uh, big time producers that are like, I can't stop working. I can't stop writing songs and doing song sessions and recording sessions or else I can't pay the bills, you know? So it's like, and that's the, to be honest, it's the same with me. Like I can't just stop working. I mean, I could, I could, I would have to change what I was doing in order to like coast because our business works on cash and it, and I just, we're constantly having to pay 
for things you know the easiest way to describe it would be like flights and, and travel expenses and hotels and all that personnel paying for them you know that never goes down it usually goes up and um diversification honestly is the best possible thing that's kind of what you guys did getting a regular job and then also doing music you're diversifying so that you can do the music i think mxpx diversifies within the music where we we used to get a lot of most of our money from getting you know doing live shows now it's now it's flipped to like putting out music uh, and merchandise uh, sure. we sell a lot of stuff in our store and that used to not be the case so i mean it's just build things up right and diversification was huge for us over the pandemic when everything kind of got shut down we started doing live streams and that kept us afloat we were doing live streams as a full band in our in our living room what you we consider a living room it's a studio but it's a house so diversification in that way and then when we come back and do live shows I wouldn't say it's gravy. I would say it's it's an investment. It's almost like promotion for everything else. It's promotion for people wanting to listen to the songs, wanting to see the live streams. It's it's all and, and live streams are a promotion for live shows. So face in Bracket's case, we never really had. You know, a lot of bands have at least one savvy guy who, mm -hmm. you know, all that stuff is kind of instinctive. That was the one missing component for all of us. So we. We kind of took the easy way out and got day jobs. <laughs> as shitty as it is, uh, for us, it works. You know, I just so. yeah, I totally get that. I guess I wasn't personally, I wasn't built for a regular day type job. I'm yeah. just, I'm a tear. I, I would, I'd get fired. Is the bottom line? Like, I've been fired. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of us musicians would get fired and do, but I won't tell the whole story, but. I, I have a, there's a story about me like painting this fence so badly that the guy was just like, dude, what do you, this is, and I, and I just looked at it and I was just like, he's right. I, this is shitty. This is terrible. You know, like this, I should not be painting your fence or anything. So speaking of home studios and, and physical labor, we built our own home studio within uh, like a fifth wheel trailer years ago. And Angelo, I had to show him how to properly use a hammer without getting injured. <laughs> yeah, sounds like me. And it took a couple times, but he I'm finally got it. Out for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that you know, you better learn how to code or something, right? <laughs> so Ray, drummer Ray, kind of guided us through the whole thing and and kind of wrangled us and. We kind of sent Marty and Angelo out to get all the stuff, and Ray and I kind of did a lot of the everything else. It worked. <clears throat> you know, everybody had to use their strengths. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, t tell me more about the studio. So, what was it on one of the one of your guys's property? Uh, yeah, it was on um, Marty's dad's property, like in a apple orchard. He has a lot of um, so land. Mar Marty's dad is or was an apple farmer. You know, oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, so in, in, um, out in Sonoma County. And so there was this relatively secluded area that we, um, it was an old, it was a trailer that was just on the property. Was that for like the migrant worker guys? I'm not sure. We don't know what the background of this trailer was, but it was just there. It was there. Yeah. And no one, I mean, I guess it was owned by Marty's family. So we, um, yeah, we basically didn't do uh any musical we didn't do any bracket stuff other than um getting together a couple times a week to turn this into a studio for like two years or a year and a half or something yeah, it was like a year and a half we took a year off to build a studio okay like you know get off after work and meet a couple times a week um so we gutted this old trailer um and then rebuilt it from the inside um from the inside out and uh and i learned how to use a hammer and uh <laughs> you learn how to do some electrical? No. No? No, you didn't do any light electrical? Didn't, yeah, we, we hired somebody we, to... We farmed a couple things out, like, okay. you know, safety stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's probably smart. Uh, and then it was as fully functional as we needed at the time to, to record um, the album that ended up being called Requiem um, that we finally released in 2006. So we So during that time, I guess... I would. I said none of us were working on music. I think Marty was doing a lot of songwriting 
Um, and, and when then you we, and Marty took the time to learn how to use all the gear. So that was a lot to of the it. best. Of, yeah. Yeah. So once it was up and running, um, we would, Marty and I got together and started kind of, um, working on, working on the, um, the groundwork of what would end up being that album. So we, we did record that ourselves. Um, and it, you know, it doesn't, it, it sounds like we recorded it ourselves and we were kind of learning how to do it. It sounds good. Um, but yeah, I think it was a big shift musically. And I think like we were talking about before when we really just let, let everything fly and started, um, put doing, it wasn't a matter of whether we should be tasteful or not. It was just what we wanted to do musically. It was how many tracks do we have left? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, When you're having fun with recording, you're learning, you're just like, we, we're not paying anybody to be here. So let's just record some more tracks, right? Just like try some more. It was a yeah, it was. A, I think for these guys, it was a lot of we have all these extra tracks left. Let's just use them. Uh, let's just record them. We don't have to use them, but it'll give us more to more to pick from. But we did end up using pretty much everything, and so that album. Um, and this was back when. So I guess it was probably like two thousand four or five. We um, we weren't emailing files to anybody. It was like burn a CD and sent it to Fat Mike, and. Um, we like in the mail and yeah. we wait, waited a few months and he called and he just, it was a little too much of a left turn musically for, um, for him to feel like it was the right thing for fat. So we were broken hearted, but, <laughs> um, but, uh, we ended up talking to Ben Harper, um, from yellow card. He had a little label called takeover records. And so he released it. Mm. And so this was the, the beginning of that period of like kind of, Brackett's going to do it ourselves and with the help of some people because none of us, like oh. Zach said, none of us are business savvy enough to learn how to actually yeah. sell things. We're going to well, completely by ourselves with help. <laughs> and, and those years, 2006 through, you know, whatever, 2018 or something like that. I mean, maybe to that, let's say 2006 through 2014 were really hard, really hard for anybody in the music business there was there was the 2007 just ec- economy just kind of tanked so there's that but also the whole the whole like music business just changed everything changed completely and like we felt it so hard around then too that's when i started doing tumble down a side project cuz i just couldn't we just couldn't i don't know it just wasn't working we weren't making money with mxpx and for the very first time i was thinking am i going to have to like get a real job like you know luckily I, I never really got a real job but i got a couple jobs technically but they weren't Paint real fences. <laughs> what's that painting fences painting fe- no nothing, nothing like that it was all like podcasting stuff or like th- this it was like somebody offered me like we're gonna pay you do you want to do this i'm like i guess i'll take your money okay uh, but um i've been lucky I'll, I'll, t- I'll say that but 2006 2007 like that's when the music tanked it, it was it was really hard to to have shows doing well people promoters weren't promoting they were only promoting the top 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 stuff they were everything else was just thrown out the door and it also kind of made it a weird time for punk too if you look at all the stuff that was being released then Mm -hmm. a lot of bands were doing either different music or labels were putting out different types of acts you know fat was putting out some some stuff that was a lot different than what they were putting out at the time Mm -hmm. it was kind of a it was transitional in a lot of ways i think not just the industry, but like our, our, our genre, whatever you want to call it, yeah. punk in general, was just a lot of change going on at that time. Just not, just not in the direction of this type of music we were making. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In right. The, um, it was going harder, right? Like <laughs> screamier. Yeah. And then, and, yeah. and then that's when we decided to start trying to sound like the Beach Boys. But I mean, I don't There's think a we place? Have, Yeah. Yeah, Th- that's okay. another thing is you have to embrace your edges, like embrace that you're on the fringe of punk. And yes, it's harder sometimes because it's not main, it's not a mainstream sound. But the people that do find you love you that much more. Totally. It's just I, so hard to find people, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, we feel that the the people that do connect with it. Yeah. You know, it's it's a real thing. It's, it's not just deep. like, oh, this band is cool because no one thinks that. <laughs> come on but but no i mean but like it they uh appreciate that we're doing something bracket heads right is that what they're called bracket heads 
They are now. Yeah. Like yeah, bracket heads. Like, might as well be. Calling all bracket heads. What's up? But, but I I totally agree that, you know, if if you're doing something that's a little weird or a little different and you dig it, you should embrace it and just freak it a little bit. And I think the right people will gravitate towards it. And if it, you know, if it pushes other people away, that's all right, too. Yeah. You know? I think you know doing doing what doing what you're comfortable doing and doing what you really like doing and embracing your strengths i think is is super important as opposed to oh what are these guys doing i better do the same thing i mean you know nobody respects that right right no you're right absolutely you got to do what you got to embrace what you do wholeheartedly yeah um i'm just thinking about bracket and how how it's not necess- it's like just thinking about like how do you reach people and how do you after you've done after you've 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 put out so many good records and you've got a lot of classic songs the hardest part is to take that legacy and get it back in front of people that used to see you all the time and they're just they're they're in some other land they're in la la land of like i've got five kids and i'm going to work and i'm doing this or whatever i used to listen to punk like that's probably the hardest thing i think for any of us band people artists creative people is is just like finding people that it's hard enough to like find new people right but like it's just as hard to find people that already like you and you can't get a hold of them either well, it's tough because they, uh, you know, I think everybody still likes what they used to like, but they're maybe discovering other stuff that maybe they didn't like at the time. Like I, I just discovered Depeche Mode and I love them now because my wife kind of nice. introduced me to them, you know? Yeah. At the time I was like, eh, gross. And I think <laughs> I people, it. people could do that with Bracket is like, I, yeah. I knew about them, but I didn't really like them because they weren't punk enough. But now that's exactly what I want to hear. You know, like you can find people like that. It just takes. I feel, I feel like that's kind of happening thought, for us but, a little bit now too. Where yeah. you know, <laughs> I don't want to say it's okay to like bracket now, but it's sort of like people are <laughs> people are right to people are comfortable to explore a little bit. Yes, yes, you know? absolutely. Like musical tastes are much broader. I mean, punk punk rock used to be a more mainstream sound, and and maybe it's coming back a little bit, but it's been rock and roll in general has been just so much smaller than than hip hop and pop music in general you know for forever right and but mid 90s late 90s was sort of our time right it was like when punk rock was big green day got huge blink 82 and offspring all these bands got huge um and then now they're just like I didn't think about this until this year and seeing all these bands that we know play stadiums or play arenas. Like yeah. Fall Out Boys in an arena here, in like in Seattle or something. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah, it's kind of what I mean, and, and then if you look at it, you look at MXPX, we're playing the Palladium, you know, this awesome. this Saturday, January 6th. Um, and it's like, I mean, we've played the Palladium before, but we always co-headlined before, so now we're headlining. So, and And then when we started our run... You know, I think this, not this era, our new album era, but like the era of modern MXPX, like we started small again. You know, it was like, it was like what anybody has to do. We did, you know, we did um, the observatory in Orange County and then we moved up from there to, you know, House of Blues. We did, we did uh, what the, the uh, Troubadour and then moved up from there to, I guess to, to, it was the Novo, which is pretty big, but then the Palladium's huge. So I, I think, I think in general, like finding people that that used to love you is really hard. But when you can do it, you start playing arenas like Fall Out Boy, right? Like, and, and it's building on that momentum. You build you know? on that, yeah. And I think Bracket can have that, and yeah. and does have that. I think I don't know. Like I said, just like random, our guitar player talking about Bracket with Dave Lake has nothing to do with this podcast or me like people are just talking about bracket yeah that's good that's that's what you want and that's one of the hardest things to get started so i just went and had lunch with my friend serge from the band limp and a lot of people know serge Mm -hmm. outside of limp and um he was saying that he was at a party and people were talking about bracket i'm like did you bring this up he's like (laughs) no no people bring it up on their own it's crazy i'm like 
I don't know, man. I I think it's just kind of just kind of comes, you know, in it's, cycles maybe. You yeah, know? it's kind of it's swirling back around, and and you guys are ready to catch on to it. So we're ready for once. Yeah, you're ready. Uh, we're yeah, we'll try, do our best. Timing is everything, right? It is. Yeah. Rad. Well, is there anything? So, do you guys want to chat about your a little bit about some of the side projects you did? I know we're full on bracket so far, but um, I don't want to like not mention the fact that you guys have some other bands um, that you you do. I don't know how active those other bands are, like Guilty Party, your your band, Angelo. Yeah, um, uh, we were we were active for a bit, and we're kind of <laughs> kind of uh, figuring out what to do next, but. Um, yeah, we'll talk briefly. Like this, we're here to talk about bracket, obviously, but but I think part of um, part of what has kept us all sort of like ready to get back together when the time is right, as this band has been um, us, you know, keeping our chops up or whatever, um, playing with other people, um, if that makes sense. Yeah. So um, because bracket hasn't really been. Uh, we haven't been doing much. We stay in touch with each other and we record an album every five years. And um, so in the meantime, um, uh, Marty, actually, this is, you know, a handful of years ago now, but uh, recorded a string quartet album, like a four, what is it called? Movement um, string quartet and released some solo acoustic songs along with that. So that kind of, I guess he was the first one to kind yeah, of. Yeah, he was first. To. Um, do something on his own but i think that was important to keep his musical inspiration going when we're kind of you know treading water or whatever yeah um what about the yeah. metal band oh that would have been me that's so your that metal was, band yeah so that was my uh it was this band called here comes the comet and it was me um another guy from a band called orchid who was kind of like a early to mid 2000s kind of sabbathy sort of like chopper soundtrack kind of band and um they had a pretty good following in europe um there was another guy who was in some other bands that tuned down pretty low like to l i think way past, l. <laughs> <laughs> way past l. all the other notes all the way down loose um, but, that's for loose yeah so w- that was kind of like a hybrid of like early punk <clears throat> early metal early like post-punk gothy new wave stuff and uh was was super exciting for me it had a lot of that new band energy sort of like new girlfriend energy kind of vibe you know really really excited about that and um you know we played a couple of shows uh recorded a whole bunch of demos and stuff and you know it just kind of ran its course um but we're you know i'm still in touch with all those guys and we we bounce ideas off each other all the time and it's uh it was a great chance for me to to stay busy and kind of keep my chops up. I I feel like like playing with a completely different type of music um, made me a better player. And um, just because yeah. I really had to be on, I wasn't playing with the same dudes that I've been for playing sure. with in school. You know, it was I was really out of my element. I was right in the deep end, and I really had to bring it. So definitely made me a better player. And then when things came back around to play the last couple shows with bracket I, I was i was pretty well rehearsed you that's know? rad yeah I was to go so it it really helped me out a lot by branching out that's um, cool we also, we also had like um everybody in bracket with the exception for from ray we had a little bluegrass side project that we were doing which was which was kind of fun we were just doing like some open mic nights coffee house stuff that's each sick. Of different instruments so i went you know these guys showed me how to play all the freaky beatles chords on acoustic guitar <laughs> okay, I have an idea. I mean, maybe you already did it, but did you do bracket songs, bluegrass? I think we did a couple. We did one or two. We did Tractor. Have you heard of like El, El Mariachi Bronx or whatever? Like you should do that with bracket and bluegrass. Yeah. That would be so I, dope. You'd be like, just grow your beards out. <laughs> you don't have to we'll do that. But start our beards. I love bluegrass, by the way. So, I mean, I, I love hearing that kind of. That it's cool because it's the same chicken time picking. when energy is as punk you know it's like mm-hmm. almost the same strumming in a Real lot of fast ways. yeah yeah and we we're doing we did a couple punk covers we did some traditional bluegrass stuff we did a couple 
weird, you know, uh, Spinal Tap cover songs and uh, and then a couple bracket songs. So we had enough to go for like a hour and a half set. The That's rad. Times. I love it. Yeah. yeah, it was, and it was another case of like wanting to stay active and figure out what to do with our musical, uh, you know, yeah, en- energy. And then the same thing with uh, Guilty Party was just a band that I started um, with. So uh, the last show that Bracket played before the pandemic, and it's currently the most recent show. Um, so <laughs> in February of 2020, we um, we played with, we kind of, because we don't play that often, we sort of decided that for these, for this world tour of San Francisco and Santa Rosa, <laughs> uh, it was our record release party for Too Old to Die Young. Um a year after it came out, but that's just, that's the speed that we yeah. get and that's okay. Uh, we, we sort of picked, we thought about bands that we would like to play with and reached out to them. And luckily almost everybody said yes. So, um, one of the bands was toy guitar, they're a band on fat records. Um, and once, uh, so we played those shows and then everything shut down and, um, everyone's home and separate. Um, I started talking with Rosie, who's the drummer, uh, in toy guitar. And we were both sort of like, yeah, it's, it's such a weird time. Um, our bands aren't playing with each other. And we started sharing some song ideas with each other over through email. Mm-hmm. That's how that band came about. That's um, cool. It sounds cool, man. Like, I like the sound of, of the songs. They're good songs. They, get, they sound cool. Like, it's real, like, it's got this low bass vibe to it. I like it. I cranked it in my car earlier. Oh, cool. um, thank you. Yeah, and it's kind of like, a, I would say it's got, it's not so far out side of what bracket's doing it's got some vibes but it's a little slower maybe um yeah, yeah it was cool it, it was a, it's a good sort of like something else for bracket fans to check out for sure yeah that's that's kind of inevitably the direction that it went in just as i was writing songs with them and um alex who's the bass player in um toy guitar also joined us and so we uh, ended up playing quite a few shows just around here, mostly like the Bay area and stuff for, for like a year and a half. And I, w- I went to a bunch of them and they were great for me to watch Angelo playing live because I know that he's a super shy person. And for him to, to jump into frontman status, uh, was really cool. was really cool. And, um, you know, a lot of great energy and it's, it's always kind of fun to watch somebody that, that you play with a lot, do something, you know, uh, where you can kind of have a different perspective when you're not sharing a stage with them. Yeah, know? absolutely. I loved it. I loved it. That's cool. Thank you. Well, well you didn't see me. I, I get back, get that band back together. I <laughs> missed every opportunity. <laughs> Dude. So uh, obviously bracket is going to be the forefront for this year, 2024. Um, I'm excited because I, I randomly checked my messages and there's Angelo like, Hey, uh, gonna do that podcast i'm like oh 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 yeah i forgot about that i mean i don't look at the you know it's like there's like three or four places to find me but um i'm just so happy that you guys are are ready to do some shows again but even if you don't do any shows just listening to your records brings so much happiness and um thanks mike and and just it it brings me personally back to that tour yeah watching you guys every night but but aside from that, just the songs, the songs themselves, man, they're they're really good, and they stood they stood the test of time. They're still good, and I think that's the best part about it is like, wow, okay, there is a reason to keep going because there's not a reason for every band to like get back together. Like, let's let's <laughs> let's be honest. I, I'll be honest, and I won't name names because I whatever. But you guys, I was like, yes, and Diesel Boy. By the way, we're playing with Diesel Boy. Um, well, we just played with Diesel Boy. <laughs> yeah, we're, this is pre-recorded, obviously. But uh, yeah, uh, that to me, it's just cool to get together with bands that you used to hang with a long time ago. Now we're all grown up, yeah. but we're still. So Angelo and I just a couple weeks ago went to go see Diesel Boy when they came through uh, San Francisco. Yeah, and yeah. But you know, it was great. It was a really good hang. They were playing with. Uh, Versus the world, who's playing with us also at Spam Fest, so we were kind of okay. able to introduce up ourselves to those guys and say uh, "We will see you in Austria" or whatever. <laughs> you know, it was cool. What's up, Donnie? Yeah, shout out to those guys, cool guys. Yeah, um, we hadn't seen Diesel Boy since probably the last time we played with them, which again was a while ago. A, a while ago, yeah. yeah. That's good. Yeah, it's just good vibes, man. I, I appreciate you guys taking the time, and and I'm Absolutely. glad this happened. It was it was cool. Thank um, you. Where can people find you? socials uh, yeah website. so yeah let's see um 
I guess is like our, is our MySpace page still up? <laughs> yeah, MySpace. Yeah, check our MySpace page. Um, we're probably most active on Instagram, which is not that active, but that's where you're going to see any any pertinent information. So it's bracket the band um, on Instagram, and uh, we have pretty much most of our catalog on Bandcamp, um, and then on Spotify to you know to stream stuff. Um, we've got most. Everything except the two early, um, the two the first two bracket records are still sort of in limbo. But um, officially, those are out of print. Um, we are going to be doing some kind of a limited vinyl release with spam on that for the 30th anniversary of our first album, 924 Forestville Street. So that's going to coincide uh, with the shows that we're playing in Europe. So okay. that'll be a cool thing. Yeah, and. Um, so, you know, hopefully getting some more reissue stuff out that uh, hasn't been available in a while. That sounds rad. I would say that the most common, um, you know, message we get is asking, why aren't those, those first two records on Spotify? Um, so we're, we're doing our best to figure that out this year. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. I hope you do. Awesome, guys. Well, thank you so much, man. It's so, like I said, just so cool to, like, kind of get to talk to you, Zach, and meet you, Angelo. and. Yeah. Yeah, send sure. my love to Marty and Ray, of course. Would love to see them again. Yeah, we'll get them next time. Yeah. All best, right. Best to Tom and Yui. Yeah, yeah, Yui. I'll, I'll say what's up to you. Yui was just in here doing some drum stuff, like, awesome. right before I, we got on this. Anyway, hey, thank you guys so much. We appreciate it. Everybody check out Bracket. Go li- add their stuff to your, your catalog. And if you're in Europe, go see them in Austria this year. Stay tuned. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Yeah. All right. That was a lot of fun. We are just kicking it. Uh, Zach, Angelo, thank you for your time. I appreciate you. It was so much fun. I had a great time talking to you guys. I love that Bracket is back. And um, it's not that you ever went away. It's just you guys have had some lulls. But back in 2024, doing some shows, working on some demos, working on some new music. Um, love to hear it. And like I said in the during the episode, these songs really do stand the test of time. They're great. It doesn't matter when they came out. These songs, bracket songs, are so good. Um, I encourage you guys to go check them out. Um, all right. That being said, uh, I appreciate you guys. MXPeaks.com. If you're ever looking to support what I do with the podcast or anything, it's always MXPeaks.com. That kind of just funnels everything and, and funds everything. So I appreciate you guys. And... and uh, shout out to Bob McKnight. Much love to you, Bob. I hope you got everything you wanted for Christmas and are ready to kick some ass this new year, 2024. Here we go. All right. We'll see you guys soon.